Eagle Houston, we rig your nag your go for PDI, over. July 20th, 1969. Apollo 11 prepares its descent to the lunar surface. You're looking great to us, Eagle. Program alarm, 1202. Give us a reading on the 1202 program alarm. Roger, 1202, we copy it. What's a 1202? I don't know. Roger, we got you. We're going at alarm. Roger, understand. Go for landing. 400 feet down at 9. Forward. It's looking pretty rocky down there. Uh, switch the manual. We're uh, pegged on horizontal velocity, 300 feet down, 3.5. And Eagle Houston, we got data dropout. You're still looking good. 200 feet, 4.5 down, 5.5 down, 160, 160. Program alarm. 12, 1201. We're go, same type, we're go. Nine forward, that's good. 120 feet, 100 feet. There's craters everywhere. Looks like we're getting low on fuel now. 30 seconds. Okay, lights on, down 2.5. I'm going to keep on going. Forward, kicking up some I dust. Still can't see, can't we're see gonna the ground. We're going to tap it light. I'm going to keep forward. Shit, what the fuck? Oh, 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 oh. What is it? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Fate has ordained that the men who went to the moon to explore in peace will stay on the moon to rest in peace. These brave men, Neil Armstrong and Edwin Aldrin, know that there is no hope for their recovery. But they also know that there is hope for mankind in their sacrifice. These two men are laying down their lives in mankind's most noble goal, the search for truth and understanding. They will be mourned by their families and friends. They will be mourned by their nation. They will be mourned by the people of the world. They will be mourned by a Mother Earth that dared send two of her sons into the unknown. In their exploration, they stirred the people of the world to feel as one. In their sacrifice, they bind more tightly the brotherhood of man. In ancient days, men looked at stars and saw their heroes in the constellations. In modern times, we do much the same, but our heroes are epic men of flesh and blood. Others will follow and surely find their way home. Man's search will not be denied, but these men were the first, and they will remain the foremost in our hearts. For every human being who looks up at the moon in the nights to come will know that there is some corner of another world that is forever mankind. Don't help me. I got this. I really do. You don't want any help? No. Okay. All right. Go ahead. These men were the first, and they will remain the foremost in our hearts. For every human being who looks up at the moon in the nights to come will know. That, that there is some corner. That there is some corner of yes. another world that is forever mankind. Very good. You know, Danny, when I was in the third grade, we got the Gettysburg Address. This is so much cooler. Your teacher chose a great speech for you to learn. You were five, so you probably don't remember. I remember. You remember? Yeah. You remember how we watched it on TV and everybody cried? Yeah. Such a beautiful speech. It's just heartbreaking. Nixon gets all the credit, but it's, it's really Sapphire who wrote it. It's such a great speech writer. Do you think the Russians will find the bodies up there? I don't know. The moon's a pretty big place. You know, the Russians are just up there doing experiments and, and looking at all the neat rocks and... I know, Mom, but why do they want to blow us up? Listen, no one wants to get blown up. Our governments just want to keep us safe. You can't erase tranquility base. You can't erase tranquility base. You can't erase tranquility base. Groups like this one have gathered outside the Soviet embassy in Washington for days now. Alarmed by recent reports of Soviet cargo missions to the moon, the crowd wants the Apollo 11 crash site declared a territory of the United States. I don't trust Russians to tell me the whole truth. They're going to make it look like we never even went there. Right now, Russia's winning. It has to be us, the U.S. Earlier today, I went to the Space Center here in Houston to talk to NASA Flight Director George Montgomery. We do suspect that the Soviets have a much broader agenda in space than they've ever acknowledged officially. And what do you suppose is on their agenda? We, uh, we suspect that they may be trying to undermine our accomplishments. In what way? Well, it could be anything from tampering with the crash site to stealing our technology 
to actually even burying all the evidence that our men were even ever there. Now, uh, this is all purely speculation at this point. Do you speculate that there's reason to be concerned about the bodies? We're at war. No telling. There has been a lot of talk about an expedition to recover the bodies, but there seems to be some holdup on this point. What's happening? Well, the war in Vietnam makes it very, very difficult to get any money out of Congress. But the rockets are sitting in a warehouse ready, the men are in training as we speak, and everybody here at NASA is really anxious to bring our heroes back. That was George Montgomery at NASA earlier today. From Houston, I'm Ellen Weir. Whoa! Look at that baby go. Nice shot. You see where it went? I think you got it almost all the way back to headquarters. All right, let's go find it. I think the boys back at the base will mind us taking this moon buggy out for a little R&R. &R. They don't mind what they don't know. <laughs> you got balls, my friend. Uh, that's what the ladies say. <laughs> I envy you, Clyde. You're a free man again. Yeah. You know the best part? I'm an astronaut. <laughs> <laughs> You're a dog. That too. I want to ride this moon buggy for real. Yeah, you'll get there. Congress is smart. They'll pass that bill right away. <clears throat> we just got to make sure the Russians aren't messing with us. I just want to go to the moon. Your <laughs> child, Frank. Hey, is that your ball over there? Yeah, I see it. The Russians want to control the world. Yeah, they will make the moon into one big spy satellite. I mean, they... Listen, they would put missile silos up there in a heartbeat All if they right. had a chance. Take a breath. Easy. Just take a breath. Well, you won't be smiling, comrade. <laughs> if Nixon's campaign promise sticks, then we'll see. All right. Well, you know what they say about promises, bud. What's that? They're like babies. They are easy to make. They are hell to deliver. <laughs> Your shot, fly boy. All Let's right. go. Here we go. Go! Slice! <laughs> We have left off. We're heading to the lunar surface. Roger, Commander, tail first. You got Joe makes a good astronaut, huh? Yeah. The needle is climbing, 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 climbing. Safety straps off. Wow. We're floating. Hello, Danny, please. I'm getting a headache. Can we play back on Earth, please? Mom has work tomorrow. Mom, they're already in space right now. Ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to the International Space Conference of 1973. Russia will speak. Hello, we are the super, super power. And we have the super, super spies. Our rockets are faster. We are Americans and we are smarter. We are faster. We are smarter. We are faster. We are smarter. We are faster, smarter. Faster, smarter. Faster, smarter. Keep hitting bear with G.I. Joe. His neck is going to fall off again and I can't sew it. Sorry. Come on, let's sit on the couch with me for a little bit. Let's read. Let's give bear a rest, huh? Well, you see, it's an illusion that, you know, created with all these angled mirrors to make that ceiling look like it goes on forever. Yes, into space. Uh, yes, ma'am. That's the general idea. I'm not one for architects, but I got to tell you that this fella got it right. Yes, he did. Now, up these steps here. Now, watch your step. Now, turn and look right down there. There are the two pits. Ooh. People can walk around them or they can file past them, you know, like in a cathedral. And will there be uh, some sort of walled tomb? No, no, no. People want more access to them. Now, you know, we thought about cremation, but uh, urns just don't have the same impact. All right, this is enormous. Yeah. Now, the idea was something, you know, between the Lincoln Memorial and a museum. But it, it's going to be a family place. It's going to have educational stuff in here, too. Oh, well, my son's going to want a season pass. <laughs> <laughs> well, we need that kind of support. Now, right through here is, uh... Oh, no, uh, Ellen, no filming. This is strictly classified. Okay, Dean, turn off the camera. You'll get your exclusive. You're just going to have to work. We're going to have to go back for more footage if we want to make this sequence work. The suits upstairs don't even know we're making this. Yeah, I know, but they take forever. You know, Montgomery promised me access to the astronauts next week. It'll be their first interview. If we wait for a green light, we might as well be making a history documentary. So you lure me here to work after hours for no overtime? You know I'm in the middle of three other editing projects right now. Hey, Dean, this will be good for both of us, trust me. When I get this, it'll go national. It'll make network. This tiny TV station in Houston has got an exclusive. 
Viewing figures will go through the roof. Okay, with your looks, it, you'll be huge, but it's like I've been telling you, you gotta be prepared. They may think you're not up to it. Well, let me worry about that. Let's just focus on this. What comes next on the reel? Uh, let me take a look. Listen, if there is a mission, uh, is the mausoleum going to be ready by then? No, that's the plan. You know, we want to have a triumphant funeral. Right. The public really wants them back. You wouldn't believe the amount of mail we get at the TV station. Well, I can just imagine. Yeah. And I can tell you, we won't disappoint them. Houston, this is Tranquility Base. We're beginning phase two. We're going to move the first bag into the lunar module now. Roger. Begin phase two. One, two, hit. <clears throat> you good? Yep. Dragging up the LM ramp. Be careful. Man, these bodies aren't light. All right. I'm going to gently push. Wait, wait, hold up. What? What's wrong? We don't have anywhere to go. What do you mean, Frank? I mean, there's not enough space. The biocontainment hatch is closed. Mission aborted. Come on up. Let's take a break. Sorry about that, George. Well, that's why we're practicing. We've got to make sure one of us has opened the hatch to the biocontainment area before we bring the bodies up. Yeah, well, I'm the first one back in after the EBA, so I'll do it. Good. Works for me. Who's the little lady talking to Scott? Ellen Ware. I invited her. She's a local news girl out of Houston. I don't think she'll poke around too much, but uh, she's ambitious, so she'll get good press. She gives good miniskirt, too. <laughs> oh, down, boy. I'll leave you to it. They're all yours. Thank you so much, George. Mr. Kirkpatrick. Mr. Blake. Uh, should I refer to you by rank? Ellen Weir. We know who you are. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear it. Uh, so, your boss, Mr. Montgomery, said you'd explain to me a little bit about this uh, exercise you're doing. Uh, what? I mean, it's, it's highly technical. Try me. Well, we have to rehearse with the lunar module. It's an exercise with the biocontainment boxes. Right, the coffins for the astronauts. That's our top priority. How does it feel to be going to the moon to retrieve the bodies of your comrades? How does it feel? It's just a part of the job. He doesn't mean that. Let's face it, a lot of the job is just PR. What he means to say is it's an honor to be chosen for the mission. Isn't he sweet? That's interesting, different perspectives. That's right. It is interesting. You want to give me your phone number? We could continue this interesting conversation over drinks. Mm -hmm. That's very tempting, but uh, I'm busy for the next ten years. That's original. Change your mind. Call me. Okay. Jeez, Clyde. All right. Take it easy. Come on. Call in. You wanted to speak with me, boss? I got five minutes and I need some answers. Okay, whatever you need. Now, is this true? You got an exclusive inside story on Apollo 12 preparation? Yes, it is. Okay, now why would they give you access? I've been speaking with George Montgomery. Uh -huh. He said NASA needs publicity for funding and a thumbs up from the government. Uh -huh. So he's being very gracious. He's being a real gentleman, you know? I can imagine. I have exclusive access to things half the astronauts haven't even seen. Uh -huh. He showed me the new mausoleum they're building for Neil and Buzz the other day. It's yeah. incredible. And he introduced me to the whole new Apollo crew, which yeah, is huge. Yeah, but the exclusive. network chiefs are going to want to know why the hell Montgomery is talking to you. Oh, come on, Walt. You know why. Charm, wit, intelligence. I do intelligence. know why. And feminine wiles can only take you so far. Oh, you know. Walt, come on. You know me better than that. I'm going to have to take you off this store and put Murphy on it. Oh, well, I'm geez. sorry, that's how it is. He's got a better grasp of science. He's our boy, okay? But I've it's been doing It's an important all this story, Ellen. Now give him the footage, tell Dina. Oh, no, 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 that's not happening. Listen, I need one moment of your time. Please, Walt, just listen. I think there's something else going on here. I think that they have some other agenda. The chief astronaut, Clyde Kirkpatrick. What, he come on to you? Yes, of course he did, but that's not the point. Now, he knows something he's not saying. <sighs> I think there's more to this mission than just bringing the bodies back home. I think that's the PR angle. I mean, yes, it's important for NASA to make a big show of honoring our men. I get that, but, you know? No, I don't. It's NASA. There's something going on up there, something they're not telling us. 
Why would the government spend billions of dollars to return the dead bodies? It doesn't make any sense. The, the, the public don't like its heroes lost in space. <laughs> yeah, it's an unpopular government, and they need this mission to make them look heroic. Listen, I've spent quite a bit of time over at the Space Center, and whenever I speak to the astronauts, whenever I look into their eyes, there is, so, I don't know, it's a sheepish look, or, or, mm -hmm. or like they've said too much. Right. Please, just let me stay on it. I have a hunch about this. Oh. I'll keep you on the story a little while longer. A oh, little so while much. longer, but if nothing comes up, it's going to Murphy, thank and there's so no looking back Bye. on this. On Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce to you, and I consider this a very real honor, the astronauts for Apollo 12. Commander Clyde Kirkpatrick, Command Module Pilot Scott Harrison, and Lunar Module Pilot Frank Blake. These, ladies and gentlemen, are the men who will take the United States back to the moon and return. What do you expect to find when you get to the moon? Rocks. Maybe a few craters. I'm not going to get to see any rocks. I'm just doing the driving for this mission. Uh, we'll be landing in the Sea of Tranquility, not far from the Apollo 11 crash site. Hopefully learn more about how we can prevent this kind of thing in the future. And we'll locate the bodies of Neil and Buzz and bring them carefully back to Earth so that they can be uh, put to rest here in Houston at the beautiful memorial that's almost finished. How can you be sure you won't have the same problems as Apollo 11? I think the conclusions of the Williams Commission were very clear. Uh, the Eagle crashed for three reasons. Low fuel, which we've addressed with larger fuel tanks in the lander. Imprecise landing site predictability, which we've addressed with enhanced navigational systems, and I believe the extra fuel also gives us a leg up on that. And the third was pilot error. Now, Neil was the best pilot around. There's no doubt about that. Absolutely. But we've been ready, more than ready, to do this for many years now. And I'm confident we can handle any obstacle that comes our way. Ten, nine, eight, Seven. Ignition sequence started. All engines are started. We have ignition. Two. One. Zero. We have a liftoff. We have a liftoff and it's lighting up the area. It's just like daylight here at Kennedy Space Center. Fifty feet down at four. Give me one quick up. Backing up slightly. If you're just joining us now, we're watching live as the Apollo 12 astronauts begin their descent down. into the Sea of Tranquility. Level off, coming down. Okay. Fuel at 76%. Contact, stop. Wow, we're finally here, Houston. Fantastic. Grandma! What is it, Danny? The trumpets touch down. Look. Uh, you're coming into the Would you clock. look? It's amazing. How did they do that? I'm on the bottom step. Wow, they made it. And on the surface. Not bad for an old man. Been a long way, but we're here. Okay, your turn, Frank. We can see you both now. We've got an extraordinary picture here. How do they get pictures like that all the way from the moon? Put a camera on the lid of the lander, and it comes back to Earth as radio waves. Oh, what do they think of next? <laughs> it's a beautiful day here on the moon. Not a cloud in the sky. Houston, you'll never believe it. Look what I see, just above the side of the crater. Well, if it's not the eagle, it better be good. Yes, sir. There she is. My lord, can't be any further than 600 feet from here. That's really, uh, that's really something. All right, come on, Frank. Let's get the rover out, get a closer look. Would you look at that view? We can see it back here. The world's watching. Absolutely unreal. Wow. You can see here, the eagle finally settled on its side, and it's perched right at the edge of a huge crater. Looks like that ejector around the edge kept him from falling in. Yeah, that's what I'd say. Is the telemetry intact? Roger. 
in the black box. Hallelujah. Claude, look over there. You see what I see? It's the flag. Oh, glory, sitting right there. They did it, Claude. They, they really did it. Looks like they put up the flag and then they walked off in that direction. Houston, we're gonna follow these footprints, see where they lead. Looks like they walked through that big rock, you see that? Here they are, we found them. Uh, Houston, I don't know if the TV camera can pick this up or not. We see two bodies about six feet apart. Oh my lord. It appears the spacesuits are intact, uh, but one helmet is off. Is it still there? Yeah, it's right beside him. Oh, what do you make of these footprints? Houston, we're picking up some additional footprints, but these don't look the same. Russians. Cosmonauts have been here. Are you sure? Hard to tell, but they're... Tire tracks. Tire tracks. We're gonna get in the buggy and check this out. Okay, Houston, I'm not sure how much further we can go. We might lose signal. Outside of the crash, there's too many craters and rocks. Still following tire tracks. Wait, you, Clyde, do you see that? We have a shiny object up ahead. Uh, we can see it on your camera uh, getting fuzzy, though. Looks like it could be a vehicle or a base or... How far away did you say that is? Don't know. It could be farther than we think because... I don't know how it's going to be farther than we think. Oh, Ellen, give a cigarette. Sure, Mr. Montgomery. <laughs> Surprised you can leave the control room during the mission. I can't believe it. I don't believe it. What? They've gone out of range. You know why I'm uncomfortable with this. Now, the further we stray, the more likely we might lose contact for real. We, we've been through this a million times in rehearsal. That transmitter looks good, Frank. I just need to fix these lenses here. Okay. Mine's all set. Roger. I think we should reestablish contact now. That is the plan. They can wait a little longer. Look, they wouldn't want us to go back without checking out those Soviet tracks. Let's just keep them in the dark for a bit. Roger that. Hey, Mom, it's me. Is Danny still up? He's asleep in his beanbag chair. Oh, good. I just wanted to check and make sure he's okay. You're working awfully late tonight. Don't you think you should come home? Yeah, I do, but we don't know what's going on yet, so I need to stay. Just make sure he knows I love him, okay? <laughs> okay. We love you, too. Man, that's a thing of beauty. That's definitely Soviet. Now, what's the giveaway? Is it the hammer and sickle or the uh, funky Cyrillic? Uh, the fact that it's an RV on the moon. Hello, American friends. Wait, Hello. who is that? Please, come in. I have, I have nice place. Come in. Uh, how did you find this frequency? I need your help. Please. Please. Where are you? I'm inside vehicle. I'll open door. You come in, yes? I want to see inside that thing, don't you? Yeah. Welcome aboard. Please, please, take helmets off. It's safe. <sighs> All right, what are wow. you doing here? It's a scientific mission. That is why I'm here. Some setup you got here. Check this out, Clark. What is this vehicle? Why, why don't we know about this? What, what, are, what are you? Are you a spy? What, what is going on here? It's a scientific I'm... mission, I said. Scientific mission? Yes. You moved those bodies. You took a helmet off. I mean, what else did you do, huh? 
You know those men out there? Those men were our friends. Who who the hell do you think you are? I mean, please, who gave please. you the right to do that? I am alone here. I have not much food left. And you, friends, are the first men I talk to in long time. Friends. Yes. Friends. Yes. Fine. Listen, you, you tapped into us. Why? Because I am stranded alone. What do you mean, stranded? Five weeks stranded. Third week returned rocket explode on launch pad stranded. That rocket explosion in Kazakhstan last month. Correct. Two men died. That, that was launching a satellite. Yes, well, not exactly. And we lost contact last week. What do you say, Clyde? We can hook him up with a comm link. Is that what you're after? You want to talk to your commanders? I don't believe it's technical issue. Do you understand? Better for them that I am forgotten. Houston, George? Roger, we read you. We read you loud and clear. What happened? What's your location? You straight off the plan. You're not going to believe this, George. Try me. We're in a Soviet mobile lunar base. Soviet? It's fine, George. Situation's under control. We're headed back to the LM now. We'll send a video feed as soon as we can. You gotta see this thing. It's a moon base on wheels. It's like one of those camper trailers NASA was developing a while back before they went with the rover. How are you communicating right now? Oh, this cosmonaut tapped into our S-band signal. He's stranded, George. I say retrieve the bodies and rescue him. There's room. I need to get Washington in the loop on this. Roger. Hey, before you go, I'd like to put Commander Vord in on the line. Uh, go ahead. Uh, thank you. Hello, Houston. I am cosmonaut Sergei Baradin. America, I am begging you. No one is coming for me. I will be so grateful and helpful to you. God bless America. Nicely done, my man. This is Ellen Weir, live from Mission Control at Houston. We have breaking news. The Apollo 12 crew is just beginning their journey back to Earth. But they have a new passenger. The first place I want to go when we are back in the United States is Hollywood. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Look, if Karolyov were still alive, we would not be talking right now. We wouldn't be here. Uh, the Russian Werner von Braun. Yes, you know Karolyov, mm -hmm. who invented our space program. He invented the rockets, but he died before we made it to the moon. Had he lived, so much would have been different. Better rockets, better focus, better coordination. But it's a seductive question, yes, to ask, what if, huh? Yeah, I, I know. I, I think about, what if Apollo 11 hadn't crashed? I don't know, what's, what's the point in that, you know? Hmm. Now is now. Yes, that is correct, now is now. And now, hmm, now all that they care about is, is politics, and looking good. They sacrifice safety for their image, but, you know, we go along. We want to fly. Hey, guys. Take a look out the window. Man. Mm -mm. Look at that. It's beautiful, huh? It sure is. You know, the Earth looks so small from up here. What the hell are we fighting for? Can somebody tell me that? <laughs> we need to work more together. Yeah, I'm surprised your country hasn't wanted to speak with you. Huh. I am not. In Russia, I am a very important person. So important that officially I don't exist. Huh. No yeah. family? Yeah, no, no, no family. I think that U.S. will be family now. Why'd you take that helmet off of Buzz? Hmm. Wouldn't you be curious? Didn't you think it would be wrong? It was our mission. You said you were a geologist. <laughs> Maybe I am a generalist. And guys, <laughs> come on. Isn't there more than one goal to a mission? Goal to please public. Please 
scientists call to please the government everybody has their own goals that conflict and they move us we are like chess pieces to them they move us around however they want yeah and in chess russia's a champ yeah <laughs> but i don't understand is what took you so long I mean, putting up the surveillance equipment, that, that should have taken you 75 minutes. You were out of contact for... <laughs> yeah, Scott, yeah, sorry to scare you like that. Well, all it was, we figured when Operation Incognito was over and everything was set up, we could stay out of contact for a while longer. Figured that George wouldn't mind if we followed those tracks, and the public wouldn't know the difference. All right, cut it. This isn't the time or the place. You know, space, I have a theory. I have a theory that the universe is like a garden, huh? and that the earth is like a flower, yes? Huh? Like a rose. And man, mankind is the pollen. It is the destiny of mankind to release the pollen and fertilize other roses. We, my friends, are space pollen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, boys, how about some dessert? What do you got? There's uh, some chocolate cubes. Uh, I see a little banana pudding over here. I'll take a chocolate cube. Wait, wait. Chocolate cubes? In Russia, chocolate come in tube. Yeah. Well, Sergey, we're gourmet. All right, Scott, give me those. I'd, I'd like to raise my little chocolate cube here for a toast. To space pollen. <laughs> and all the pollinators. To space pollen. To space pollen. Pollinators. Yeah. Spreading yeah. our seed. All right. <laughs> hey, boys. Hey, George. What's going on? Uh, we have a person here who'd like to speak with y'all. Should I patch him through? Yeah, go ahead, Houston. Who is it? Hello, gentlemen. This is President Nixon calling. Hello, Mr. President. It's an honor for us to speak with you. Well, I'm just calling to express my very great admiration for your hard work and your total dedication. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm told you have a Russian on board who's been abandoned by his government. That's correct, Mr. President. America does not leave a man to die on the moon, and we're proud that we're able to set aside our differences to lend a helping hand. I pray for your safe return, and we all look forward to a triumphant celebration back home, and our astronaut heroes can soon be laid to rest in American soil, and no longer on the cold wasteland of the moon. Mr. Montgomery, this is Ellen Weir. Well, hello, Miss Weir. Uh, you know, if you're calling about your crew having that first interview with Mr. Ward, and that is still my promise to you. Thank you. Uh, however, if you don't mind, I'd like to just take a few minutes of your time and interview you first. My schedule is just too tight right now. You can visit Sergey in the quarantine hospital. M Mr. Montgomery, uh, George. He hung up. <coughs> Okay, your move. Yeah, I know it is my move. I, I, please give me a moment. <coughs> uh, you're an easy game today. Yeah, very easy. It's because I don't feel so good. I have cough. Yeah, you look like you need to get some rest. I can't get the rest. Your bosses, no, I saw your cameras, and they are not happy. They keep asking me this. Frank, why do you guys care what we see at Tranquility when the bodies are gone? There's other stuff there that we couldn't bring back. You know, it's our territory. Our governments are the same. Come on, make your move. All right, that makes it easy. Uh, I'm not thinking good. Our bosses play games. They tell public all this science and for good of mankind. But they tell us to keep secrets. You put up spy equipment when public thought video was kaput. 
but you'll keep your mouth shut. Frank, you are my friend, right? Yeah. I guess not many other guys have been to the moon, Sergey, so that puts us in a pretty exclusive club. My bosses know that you came inside my vehicle. No record of what you asked or what I told you. Well, then that's good for you, then, right? Look, don't get all worked up. You're in America now. I thought I would be safe in America now. You're discharging Clyde me day after tomorrow. I guess not you, though, huh? Okay, Mr. Voriden, it's nice to see you. You're looking well. Ah, thank you, thank you. Uh, and you two are looking well uh, through the glass. <laughs> <laughs> Sergey, how are you filling your days here in the quarantine block at the Space Center? Uh, well, I, I played chess with Frank Blake, and he lost. But <laughs> now he has left. How long do you have to stay in there? I don't know. I mean, until this, this cough goes away, uh, it, it is nothing. Uh, Mr. Vorden, our astronauts will be leading a huge celebration next week. Is it customary for your nation to reward their space explorers? Yeah, when they choose to. <laughs> and what about in your case? <laughs> in my case, uh, my life is cheap. <laughs> I'm orphaned. I have no wife, no children. It is... Uh, it, I am a solitary guy. It is one of the reasons why they picked me. And also, I love flying so much, even a little crazy. I don't give up. I accept all flights. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Excuse me. Even when I know that they do not do enough tests. It is because they are always in a hurry looking at America. I take risks. But now, now something has changed. I'm older. What's changed? And, uh, well, I, I, am, I am older, yeah. And I'm, I, I'm more tired. Well, all due respect, sir, but many American citizens think that you are a spy. Yeah, yeah, that uh, I understand. I understand. But you see, I, I, I'm asking for asylum. I want to become a great American. Well, we wish you the best with that. Thank you. Now, are you excited about your future now that you're here? I'm nervous. I'm nervous because I know too much. Too many people's secrets. I wish I did not know. It is hard. It is a burden. Mr. Montgomery, you won't have a face-to-face -face interview with me? Afraid not, but a phone interview with me is hard to get, so it's your lucky day. What can I do for you? During his time in quarantine, Mr. Voriden was questioned extensively about his motives. Uh, well, he claims his health was ignored, and now he has been moved out of quarantine to another hospital. I believe our public relations staff can brief you about that. But Mr. Voriden was accused of being a spy. Do you have any evidence of that? Uh, we haven't been able to determine Mr. Voriden's motives, but uh, it wouldn't be the first time, so yes, we're considering that as a possibility. It wouldn't be the first time. What do you mean by that? <laughs> I didn't say anything profound. In my interview with Sergei, he revealed to me something I find shocking. He said that during the flight home, Scott and Frank admired your acting skills? Sergei is a loose cannon. Russians are weaned on fairy tales, you know. Did you have a motive for this mission other than to bring the bodies back? Why were you putting up surveillance equipment? Was there any secret agenda? No, and if there were, it would be a matter of national security and not open for discussion. George, my viewers need to know exactly what's All going on. All your viewers need to know or care about is that the men on the moon came home, and Mom and Pop and the kitties can all go visit them in a big, tall building. That makes them proud. Well, I'm glad that you find that makes them proud, but I have a duty to uncover anything oh, that's going on. up, little girl. There's a war on. We're doing everything that we can and need to do to protect our people. I'd like to visit Commander Voradin again. Can you tell me what hospital he's in now? No, no, I can't. Who can? No one. He's dead. He died this morning, suddenly. The, the fever, some sort of fever. But... They couldn't treat it. He, he burned up. Doctors said it was uh, some sort of a space virus. Hard to trace. We've, we've never come across it before. But... He... He was well. 
How could he have died? How how could he burned up? That sounds violent. Like 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 he was poisoned. Oh my god. Who who poisoned him, George? Whose poison was it? Ours or theirs? Miss Weir? Who poisoned him? There is no story for you here. Take a deep breath and listen very carefully. We are fighting evil, and sometimes that gets ugly. Go home to your son. We can work together again. Just remember that the most important job in the world is being a mother. There will be other stories. <laughs> There's our girl. So, Ellen, you got the story? No, I... I what, what do you mean? I don't know. There's... There's no evidence either way. Nothing conclusive. We, we, we don't know why he died. Autopsy found nothing. Probably a, a virus. There's, there's, there's nothing what to it, What do you Walt. mean, woman? We're counting on you. The network seems to think that sun shines No, out. I can't. I don't want to. No, I'm sorry. I have to finish my script. Finish it up, then. You go on the air. You do your thing. I know it's been a tough story. You're tired. Go take your kid to Disney World. Then we'll talk about rats when you get back. No, you leave Danny out of this. Ellen. You guys are so concerned about my kid. Just please. Sir, I have to be on the air in 20 minutes. Okay? Yeah, honey, what the hell are you going to say? I... I'm going to say that the bodies are safely in the mausoleum. That's all that matters, right? Mission accomplished. That's all anybody cares about anyway. <laughs> oh, that's it? Yes. That's it. And I'll sign off. God bless America. And make everybody happy. That's all you really want. In Forever Mankind by Jonathan Mitchell and Judith Kampfner, you heard as Ellen, Amy Warren, Danny, Eddie Schweihart, George, John Henry Cox, Clyde, David Slavin, Frank, Christian Pallack, Scott and Dean, Mike Iveson, Sergei Moti Margolin, President, John Adovino, Grandma, Dorothy Stinnett, Neil Armstrong, Matt Evans, Buzz Aldrin and Walt, Ed Herbstman. Director, Jonathan Mitchell. It was produced by Jonathan Mitchell and Judith Kampfner and is a corporation for independent media production for BBC Radio 4.